Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. This is what the aperture ring on the lens is supposed to do. You turn the ring and the mechanism physically moves the aperture blades to control the size of the iris. But take pretty much any modern lens with one of these rings and you'll find they aren't actually physically connected to the aperture at all. That's the case among multiple manufacturers. They're all just an electronic control ring that relays a signal to an actuator inside the lens. Meaning without power, they don't work once they're unmounted from a camera. And this electronic design sounds like an awfully ungraceful solution. For what problem exactly? This could all be avoided simply by making an aperture ring that actually moves the aperture, exactly like how lenses have been made for centuries. Why not make them like these Loxia lenses from Zeiss? There are modern lenses and have mechanical aperture rings. How about cinema lenses? These mechanical rings are integral to their functionality. Well, take a look at all these lenses with real aperture rings. What do they have in common? These are all manual focus lenses, which is a massive hint as to why these lenses require electronically controlled aperture rings. And the answer is to facilitate autofocus. Autofocus works better when there's more light. That's why in dark places, your autofocus tends to be slower and less accurate. While the key factor here is how bright the actual scene is, your autofocus sensors are always located behind the lens, so the size of your aperture will affect how much light your autofocus sensor receives. Say for example, you're shooting photos with an f1.4 lens stopped down to f8. If that autofocus lens indeed had a truly mechanical iris ring, the diaphragm would be in the f8 position the whole time, giving your autofocus sensors an unnecessarily dark image to work with. That would be handicapping your autofocus performance and potentially causing you to miss a shot entirely. So what happened back with DSLR cameras is your lens aperture remains in the wide open position even though you've already dialed in f8. And that is to give your autofocus the brightest possible image to work with, as well as giving you a bright viewfinder image. And the diaphragm only closes down to true f8 the moment you release the shutter. On mirrorless cameras, the camera typically would move and keep the aperture at their true positions for preview accuracy, but override it to a brighter setting momentarily when autofocus is being performed in a particularly dark environment. I'll show you exactly what happens when you force the camera's autofocus system to work with a dark aperture, but if you are the one forced to take photos under low light situations, there actually is a whole class on Skillshare that offers tips on low light photography. It's called Low Light Photography, Settings and Tips to Capture the Dark, taught by Maria Jose Govea. It's a short 28 minute class packed with tips on how to get the best images in low light. And for me, the most valuable parts are when Maria shows us some of her most incredible shots and explains the combination of gear and technique she's used to accomplish those challenging low light photos. And just in case you haven't heard of our sponsor Skillshare yet, they are an online community home to thousands of inspiring classes. You can find classes on film and video, all the way to topics like marketing, and all of them are made just for creative and curious people like ourselves. It's all built around learning and exploring new skills, deepening existing passions, and for us to sometimes just get lost in creativity. And being curated specifically for learning means there are no ads on the platform for you to stay focused. They're constantly launching new premium classes, and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And now to show you how big of a deal Aperture is to your autofocus system, all I have to do is show you the autofocus behavior in video mode. The Aperture diaphragm has to permanently stay at the dialed in value when you're shooting video, so the autofocus system has to make do with whatever it's getting. I shouldn't have to explain why an Aperture with a mind of its own might make for some pretty terrible looking video. So here's a Sony A7S Mark III with an 85 f1.4 G Master. Using autofocus wide open at f1.4, it's reliable, it's fast, it's accurate. But look what happens when we stop it down to f16. The actual amount of light in the room hasn't changed one bit, but you can clearly see the autofocus struggling despite having so much more depth of field to work with. It is, however, super uncommon to be shooting in the dark with such a narrow apertures, so for most cases, it's really a lot less of an issue than I'm making it sound like. 
One might also ask, since the aperture control is already fully electronic, what's the point of making a classic style aperture ring on the lens then? Why not just control everything from the camera body? And why try and be something you're not? Well, for me, I think it's always a good thing to have one additional physical control. That means one less dial being occupied on your camera body. It's also very easy to see what f-stop you have dialed in simply by glancing at the lens barrel. It's a reading that exists in the real world instead of in a screen. And while sometimes there is the issue of accidentally bumping the ring and throwing your aperture setting off, there is typically a special setting at the very end of the ring that gives you the option to ignore the ring entirely and let you dial everything in camera side. And that way you get the best of both worlds in my opinion. Also, if the aperture ring was fully mechanical, then your camera won't be able to do any automatic iris adjustments in auto mode, for example, because it doesn't have control over the diaphragm. And that is why most modern lenses opt to use these aperture rings that are really just electronic dials. If you found this video helpful, then I might just see you in one of my other videos.